passengers, may we have your attention please? Your flight to the everything you need to know about the Ethereum upgrade island is about to take off. We ask that at this time to please fasten your seatbelt. Thank you and enjoy your flight. All right, so we think that it will be best to break down the Ethereum upgrade from a bird's eye view so that you can see the whole picture. Now, we should mention right off the bat that the upgrade is not a one-time thing. Instead, it has been planned in phases. So, what stage of the upgrade are we in now? What changes do we expect to see? And as an Ethereum user, what should you do on your end? Well, let's find out. Okay, so before we go any further, let's quickly cover Ethereum and its design. That way we can understand why the upgrades are necessary. So to do this, let's go way back in time to 2015 and meet Ethereum's founder, Fidelik Buterin. The Canadian programmer introduced Ethereum that year as the first blockchain network to feature smart contracts, which are basically algorithms that self-execute once specific preset conditions are met therefore cutting out intermediaries. Now, unlike the Bitcoin network, which was and still is purely transactional, Vitalik envisioned Ethereum as a world computer, one upon which decentralized applications would live. And this vision became a reality and more and more dApps were built on the network at a staggering pace. But Ethereum started suffering from its own success with scalability issues as it can only process around 15 transactions per second. Now this is nowhere near enough. For context, the network processes trillions in transactions annually and has around 38 billion in total value locked according to DeFi Llama. So you sort of see the issue clearer now, right? So with the network being limited to 15 transactions per second, Transaction times and fees end up rising at times of network congestion. So, enter Ethereum upgrades. Now, as we've mentioned, the upgrades are not happening all at once. It's not as straightforward as going to the app store and clicking update or replacing one part with the other. Rather, the upgrade will take place in phases. Now also to avoid confusion, the Ethereum Foundation deliberately stopped referring to the upgrade as Ethereum 2.0 earlier this year, stating that they intend to reflect the fact that what's happening is a network upgrade rather than the launch of a new network. So anyway, let's go deeper into the main three phases of the upgrade. So the first upgrade known as the Beacon Chain went live in December 2020 and this upgrade introduced native staking to the Ethereum blockchain, a key feature of the network shift to a POS consensus mechanism. Now keep in mind that Ethereum is traditionally a proof of work network where miners use a machine's processing power to compete to solve complex mathematical puzzles and verify new transactions, which is an energy intensive process. On the other hand, POS networks instead rely on your staked assets to secure the network and validate transactions. Specifically, the amount you've staked acts as a form of guarantee that you won't try to compromise the very same networks that your funds live on. Now, the main advantage of POS is that it is far more energy efficient than POW, as you don't need a lot of computing power to secure the blockchain. Now note that the Beacon Chain is a separate blockchain and has been running in tandem with the Ethereum mainnet. You can learn more about POW versus POS in our video right here. Okay, so then the second stage known as the merge represents the joining of the existing execution layer of Ethereum, that is the main net we use today, with its new proof of stake consensus layer, the beacon chain. After the merge happens, that is when the two systems finally come together, proof of work will be replaced permanently by proof of stake. Now this phase is in its final stage with the merge expected to happen in the third or fourth quarter of this year. You can check out the Ethereum Foundation's blog for the latest progress updates. 
Okay, so then on to the final stage of the upgrade, which is known as sharding, which involves splitting the database on the Ethereum blockchain so that instead of settling all operations on one single blockchain, shard chains spread these operations across 64 new chains. So this way, each validator verifies only the respective shards they're responsible for instead of verifying the whole network. Therefore, sharding encourages decentralization by lowering the barrier to entry for anyone wishing to run a node. This is also when Ethereum's scalability and capacity are improved. Now, currently, scaling solutions like Layer 2 roll-up scaling solutions are already being implemented and are meant to work synergistically with sharding in the future. This technology takes much of the burden of computation and storage out of the main blockchain and uses the chain just enough to benefit from its security guarantees. According to the Ethereum Foundation, this stage is expected to be implemented sometime in 2023. Okay, so now what after the upgrade? Upon the upgrade's completion, Ethereum will experience all of the proof of stake benefits. POS will bring Ethereum better scalability, accessibility, and security, as well as make it more environmentally friendly. That said, the cause of Ethereum's issues was scalability in the first place. Ethereum's upgrade aims to address the trilemma, a term coined by Vitalik himself which implies that you cannot have scalability, security, and decentralization all at the same time. For example, increasing scalability and decentralization means cutting into the security as you have to do more validation more quickly. Hence, security will suffer. According to Vitalik, it is the job of the Ethereum upgrade to make the network scalable while still sustaining its security and decentralization attributes. Though to make things clear, especially since the next phase will be happening soon, the merge will not lower transaction costs, nor is it expected to meaningfully increase the speed of these transactions. Okay, so then what do you need to do for the Ethereum merge? Is there anything that you need to do? Well, this question has come up due to some Ethereum users having concerns about their funds, but Ethereum has specified that no action is required to upgrade on your part, so you don't need to do anything with your funds or wallet before the merge. When completed, the potential of decentralized technology may be truly realized. So on a scale of one Ethereum to 10 Ethereum, how excited are you about the upgrade? Well, let us know in the comments. Also, remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on all our socials for future alpha. See ya.